So, is the Cavity Magnetron a thing from the planet Zog? No. <laughs> I didn't think it was. But the answer is really fascinating because the answer is out there. It came from you, the viewers. Thank you so much. This is the idea behind this channel. This is a follow-up. So here's some wonderfully erudite, smart viewers' comments to why the cavity magnetron appeared out of the blue. It didn't really. I think the reason that I and lots of other people probably think it magically appeared overnight is because it was secret and I think the cavity resonance of capacitance it was a bit boring and it wasn't covered in the popular press that's why and I got a few things wrong I correctly pointed out the holes the cavity the resonance of the holes are important but I completely forgot that the magnets on either side actually produce the effect. Yeah, good one, viewers. Let's hear what they have to say. Janet Winslow, I worked on Marconi Marine Radar in the late 1970s. If I recall correctly, the magnetron is magnetic, so wasn't made from copper, aluminium, etc., or maybe made of those metals, but the magnet was external to it. It wasn't just the increased power that was significant, but the frequencies it generated, i.e. microwaves, proportionate to the size of the cavities. Before the magnetron, radar had frequencies in tens of hundreds of megahertz. The magnetron generated frequencies in the thousands of megahertz, allowing them to be focused. The massive negative pulses put on the cathode was another secret to the generation of radar, microwaves and the magnetron. But yes, interesting where the concept came from. I suspect it was just a leap of intuition in overcoming the limitations of the Kylostron. Thanks, Janet. Wolvenar. The magnetron was very likely an exploration of the possibilities and oddities of feed horns when we noticed how the physical dimensions reflected, amplified, or even created errant, unwanted frequencies. Just a guess based on my background with RF, radio frequencies. No, that's not a guess. That's expert knowledge. Thank you very much. Sean BZA. Magnetron itself is copper, but has the need for an extremely well-directed magnetic field down the length. So there were two large magnets to provide it. With pole pieces shaped so as to make the field as linear as possible to get high power, and a low loss, thus the need to keep it well clear of ferrous metals as they distort the fields and the magnets are carefully aligned during manufacture. I have one set of those magnets dating from the 1950s, removed from an old English electric magnetron, and they have warnings on them about stray metal, and also that the encode that they were comprised of is both hard brittle and also will stop working at around 150 C as this is just under the curie point of the alloy. They needed forced air cooling and in aircraft there was a lot of it. Oh that's just brilliant. Thank you so much Sean BZA. Plug for UK. Hi plug. Brummies are not stupid. We only act that way uh, most of the time. Put two Brummies in a shed together and we can come up with all sorts of inventions. <laughs> I so agree. Birmingham is the centre of invention. Uh, and sheds? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Ed McIntosh. I considered kitchen appliances to be alien technology for many years. I don't mind dabbling with the unknown from time to time in the laundry room, <laughs> but some things are beyond the can of mortal man and should be left with their mystique intact. 
I may own a trouser press. I don't know. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks, Ed. So it wasn't that fascinating. I learned a lot and hopefully you did too. And that's the idea of my channel, my videos to you. I give you an idea, you know more than I do, and you share it with the world. And I'll do a follow-up video with your expert wisdom. If that's the kind of film that you like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and get involved because of you, the truth is going to be always out there.